In the summer of 1976, two childhood friends, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs, delivered the first 50 Apple computers to the Byte Shop, a local computer store in Silicon Valley. This was a critical milestone that kicked off a technological and economic revolution that changed Silicon Valley, the tech industry, and in some ways the world. That first computer, the Apple I, was not a big commercial success with only 175 units sold in just over a year, but the company that grew out of that project became the most valuable publicly listed company in the world and has created more wealth than any other private company in history. This video documents the process of restoring one of the few remaining Apple One computers and getting it running again more than 40 years after it was first sold. The Apple One was sold as a fully assembled and tested motherboard along with documentation. There was no case, keyboard, monitor, or data storage device included. You could optionally purchase an audio cassette interface card and some software on audio cassettes. Some retailers bundled the missing accessories required to actually operate an Apple One. This particular Apple One previously belonged to an engineer in Germany, who himself bought it from someone in Rochester, New York in the late 1970s. When it came time for me to consider buying it, I had only this one photo to evaluate the board and decide if I was interested. It appeared that the board had most, if not all, of its original components, but there was also what looked like corrosion on the white ceramic microprocessor and perhaps other parts as well. The seller had no information of when it had last been operated, what conditions it was stored in, and no documentation or accessories were available. When I received the Apple One, I immediately asked my colleagues who work in our PCB repair division to inspect the board and assess its condition. I also shared some high resolution photos with other Apple One owners and enthusiasts to get their input on its condition and how best to approach its restoration. It became apparent that what had looked like corrosion in the photos was actually residue from decomposed anti-static foam in which the board had been stored. Liberal localized soaking in 99% isopropyl alcohol, scrubbing with a soft toothbrush, and some rinsing with distilled water made it possible to remove all of the visible residue and grime. What emerged underneath was one of the most pristine, unmodified, and completely original Apple One boards I've ever seen. This gave us great hope that it may be possible to power it on and make it fully operational. And so began the process of getting this Apple One running. We started by evaluating the power section of the board, checking the values of the capacitors and making sure everything was nominal. We also tested some of the critical ICs and pinpoint machine and did a checksum on the prompts. Everything checked out okay. Based on this success, we decided to power up the board and take our chances. Unfortunately, the result was not what we expected. Though the terminal section of the board powered up successfully, the computer section did not. We went back to the test bench and concentrated our efforts on the 5 volt rail of the power supply since we noticed that the keyboard was not getting power either. Each regulator was carefully tested by gradually increasing the input voltage to make sure it was functioning correctly. We then realized that the problem was not with the Apple One but with the Apple II Plus keyboard we were using. We replaced the keyboard and voila, success! A blinking cursor indicates that both the terminal and computer sections of the board are functioning. It's alive! In our euphoria, we skipped a few more testing steps and jumped straight to loading BASIC via the Apple Cassette Interface card. As you can see, this did not go as we expected. Though BASIC had been loaded into memory, there was some data corruption, either during writing or reading from RAM. Since we had tested each DRAM IC individually, we were at a loss as to what was going wrong. It was time to step back and run some more low-level tests to try and figure out what we had missed. We tried entering the simple burn-in test program included in the manual of the Apple One, but the WAS monitor was unable to write or read the correct values from memory. If we wrote each hex pair to the appropriate memory address one by one, it worked. We must have missed something when we tested the DRAM in the pinpoint. Or was this a problem with the PROM? It couldn't be the PROM because the problem manifested even when using the Apple cassette interface that has its own PROM. We decided to replace the first 4K of DRAM with another working set. And it worked! 
While removing the original DRAM, we noticed that one or two legs on the ICs had some corrosion we hadn't noticed before. When they were tested in the pinpoint, the connection was made higher up on the legs where they had been cleaned earlier. That's probably why they passed the test in the pinpoint, but performed inconsistently when mounted in the Apple I. We cleaned each DRAM IC individually to remove all visible corrosion on the legs and put the force cape, first 4K back where it was originally. Uh, we've got a blinking cursor, R, turn, and there we go. So this is showing that the basic functionality of the keyboard, the uh, CPU, the first bank of memory, the first, first four kilobytes of memory, and the terminal section of the board are working in order to display uh, this text. The next thing we're going to do now uh, is we are going to try and load basic. So I'm going to reset the processor, clear the screen, and find my instructions. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the Apple One to run its WAS monitor from the uh, Apple cassette interface board, as opposed to the WAS monitor running in the proms on the main board. So. Okay, so it's ready for that. Let's get the iPad on. And um, the audio cassette interface, the Apple cassette interface is connected to an iPad. Uh, and I'm going to play the audio file from the iPad. Uh, you would normally have done this from a, um, from a cassette player, but we're not going to do that today. Uh, so... And enter. So the audio file is now playing here on the iPad, going into the Apple cassette interface. The Apple cassette interface is then loading the contents of the audio file, the basic, into memory. And when that finishes loading, which will take another 20 seconds or so, uh, we will get a, a prompt here on the screen, a uh, forward slash. And that should be uh, any second now. There we go. So we've got the prompt. The auto file is uh, basically done. So now we um, are running basic. So the next step is to load basic. There we go. Uh, BASIC is fully operational on this Apple One using all of its original components. There's been no modifications, no replacement of any components, um, a lot of cleaning, uh, a lot of removal of corrosion and grime, uh, but otherwise this is a 100% fully functional Apple One, original Apple One computer. Woohoo! I loaded the Apple 30th anniversary ASCII art program into the Apple One. And now we're going to run it, and hopefully we'll get some pretty pictures on the screen. So, there we go.
Hasta aquí hasta 